Hello. It's been a while, but I am back on the internet, on YouTube. Hello, denizens, denzines, denizens. Anyhow, welcome to my little corner of cyberspace. I am Kira Uno, and today we're going to be learning how to do visible mending. This is something that's been going around Reddit for a while, and for anybody who is in the DIY or um, anybody who enjoys sewing, or even if you just need to repair something, because there is a lot of things that get discarded when it comes to modern clothing. So say for example, you get a whole t-shirt, you throw it away, you buy another one for 10 bucks. Happens all the time and it is so very wasteful. I try to avoid throwing out clothing where possible or I'll try and donate it where I can. And let's face it, some of you are still in quarantine and in this dumpster fire that is the year 2020, we're going to teach you a couple things. Uh, I'm sure that there is a million things out on the internet right now that will teach you how to do exactly what I'm showing you too, but I'm glad you found this channel because I'm glad I have the opportunity to entertain you or at least teach you something or, you know, if you like my face or my t-shirt or my skirt, say something in the comments below. Um, I do monitor the comments just so that you're aware because, you know, the internet can be a dark and scary place, but I will try and check back regularly to post anything that is relevant. If it's somebody trying to sell me PVC pipes because I did that once, I kept getting spams in my in the messages so I just had to keep deleting them, I don't want that. And I don't want you have to, having to deal with that either. Anyhow, let's get started. What you're going to need is you are going to need an article of clothing, and I just realized where I put it. There you go. An article of clothing that has a lot of holes. This t-shirt is not mine, and as you can see, it is incredibly filled with holes. Like, they're, they're, they're all over the place. I think some of this might have had to do with our former cat, or just wear and tear over time, because this is, this used to have a TARDIS on it. Okay. So, but it is gone, and there's a million and a half holes on this t-shirt. So we're going to use this as a demo to show you how to do visible mending. So you need a holy something. You got to figure out whether it's stretchy or non-stretchy. In this case, this is kind of stretchy, it still has a little bit of gift to it. But we're going to be using non-stretchy fabric to fix it with. What you also need is if you are using a, a straight grain fabric, like something that's uh, doesn't stretch, that has cotton or linen or, dare I say, polyester, um, you can use just a straight warp and weft fabric, like what I have here. This one's got little Paddington bears on it. I don't know if you can see it. And I've got a little bit in blue too. So you're gonna need some spare fabric to make your holes to be mended. Some of them we can just whip stitch or what have you to close up the hole, but there's a lot of holes and I think we actually have to do some drastic measures with this one. You're also going to need thread, which I have here. And you're also probably going to need, depending on what you're modifying or mending, you're going to need something like this darning mushroom. There's also like darning balls or things like that that people can buy on the internet. I got this at a local craft store. It does come apart. I almost never use it with the stem because I just elasticize it over top of the mushroom. Um, I'm honestly not sure what the stem is for, but I'm sure I'll figure that out eventually. And then um, if you want to go extra fancy, you can always use embroidery thread, which I have some over here in my sandwich box, which I recycled. This originally had not food, but fabric in it. And a shout out to the Twisted Stitchers out in Ajax. So we've got a bunch of embroidery thread. You are going to want to determine what kind of fabric you're using for your mending. Because if the base fabric, in this case it's a cotton weave t-shirt, just some normal like sort of woven stretch, or sorry, not a woven, knitted. This is knitted stretch. 
Words are hard today. I apologize. So if you're using something stretchy, you are going to want to use something like a ball needle to mend your stuff with. You can buy them in the store. This is specifically meant for stretchy fabrics because if you use a sharp needle, a sharp needle, in other words, your standard quilting, sewing, mending needle, um, it will start poking holes and causing runs in the stretchy fabric. So you don't want that. So the ball needle pushes past the threads instead of carving them up. So that's what we're going to use today. Now I do have a plethora of other needles in my sewing kit. So we don't need those. Now you can use, like I said, regular thread. You can also use embroidery thread. You can use really anything that'll fit in the needle that you're trying to fix. Some people like to go super bold and colorful. Um, I have seen some rather interesting patch jobs on uh, Reddit and I do have that um, to my feed. Um, for supporting your fabric while you're sewing, the other thing that you're going to want, especially if you're working flat projects, like I will be with this t-shirt, you're going to want embroidery hoops. They come in a whole range of sizes. I have ones that are as big as my lap. And then I've got ones that are super tiny, like this one here. This is probably oh, three or four inches across in diameter, or well, in radius. And then you've got other ones that are like this size. And you can use plastic, you can use wood. It doesn't really matter as long as it keeps your work steady. Uh, this one is 15 centimeters and there's even a top and a bottom to it so that it has like a bit of a ridge on it to keep your fabric extra flat and extra secure. So let's let me show you one that I had started earlier. This is a pair of stretchy pants that I did earlier, but I wanted to reinforce some of the inner thigh. And sadly, because I had a cat at one point, or just from wear and tear, I had holes in it. But this is essentially one of my personal patch jobs. If you're a beginner, you don't have to make it look fancy. It is visible mending. So you can, as long as you use the right techniques, you can go as fine or as not fine as you want. You can even weave the fabric in if you really want to. Um, there's also woven, like weaving uh, mending patches that you can actually weave onto the fabric. Um, it sort of acts like a cross between a weaving loom which you can see here in the corner, and um, like a uh, an embroidery hoop. This is my current patch project, and somehow, I don't know why, but I have wound up with the same problem on both sides of the legs, so I'm fixing that. And this is the inside seam towards the garage. It, it happens. So, let's get started on showing you some basic stitches. All right, so... I realize this is not the best camera angle in the world, and I apologize, but we work with what we have. So essentially, for any of the little holes that are in places that can be easily mended, I will show you, I'll start with the armpit here, because you can see how it's frayed a little bit here. Yes, the fabric is wearing out over here, but you know, there's only so much we can do before the entire fabric falls apart. So I'm going to essentially sew this closed and I'll show you how to do that in a second here. So what we're going to need is we're going to need some thread and I will use just some regular sewing thread for those of you who are interested in using regular sewing thread and can't get access to easily to um, any sort of embroidery thread. So then that way you can follow along at home with whatever you have. Right. And one thing I forgot to mention before we got started, another key thing that you're going to need is scissors to cut your threads. Hydration, because staying hydrated is super important. 
and this is just filled with water. Don't worry, it's not gonna go anywhere. We have our ball needle, ballpoint needles, and we've got our thread, and we've got our whole setup in a way that makes it easier to sew. Now, because we're going to be essentially cinching this closed, this does not have to be super tight. You can leave a little bit of give because that's kind of what you want. And you can very carefully pull it together. Now, um, I have realized this is going to be really hard for you to see if the fabric and the yarn or the thread are not very high contrasting because it won't be as visible it could, as it could be. So I'm gonna change it up and use this very vibrant green. So you're gonna wanna take a length or two, nothing too long, maybe about 12 inches in terms of one side. We're gonna double this up, so you're probably gonna want about 24-ish inches. I don't know what that is in centimeters. I, he, <laughs> I live in Canada and I don't, what the, don't know what the conversion is. So once you have your knot, I realize this is not the easiest thing to see in the world because the camera doesn't have autofocus because I'm using a crappy cell phone. Um, and this is an old generation cell phone too, but it had the most memory, so that's what I'm going with. Anyhow, um, so once you have your, your thread knotted, you wanna start on the underside of your fabric and you don't have to do anything particularly fancy in terms of the stitch you can just do what we call a whip stitch which is just pretty much what it sounds like now if you have any seamed edges you can if you're careful, just sort of bind them up. This is kind of a loose t-shirt, and this is this belongs to my partner. So I'm sure he won't mind if there's like a quarter inch missing off the seam. So as you can see, it's not the neatest job in the world. I mean, I could go neater. But this is also just a, for demonstration purposes on the internet. If I wanted to go neater, I could, but I'd also have to, at this point, do a time lapse. However, that is not to suggest that you can't go back over your work. In fact, you could even use this as just a basic seam to keep it steady for you, and then if you want to really go in, you could take some matching thread, or mismatching thread, depending on how you feel, and go over it in, say, embroidery thread. Now, I may be a little bit weird, but I need a lot of strength in my threads, and this is why I use a lot of polyester. Um, I tend to use one of two types of threads. I tend to use Gooderman. I don't know how well you can see that. And this is 100% polyester. Uh, the other one that I tend to use, which I used for the longest time because my sewing machine just kept, I had an older one and it just kept breaking threads, is Coates Dual Duty All Purpose 100% Polyester. And they come in much bigger spindles than this, so there's a whole bunch of different sizes that you can get. Oh hey, how about that? This one actually has cotton. It's a cotton polyester mist. Okay, now I'm gonna have to actually look at these and see which ones... I thought it was 100% polyester. Okay, I'm wrong. Anyhow, you can, if you want to, use 100% cotton if you are trying to go more environmentally conscientious. You can use something like linen thread, or you can use, if you're really feeling extra and fancy, you can use silk. But it's expensive. So, just as a fair warning, um, most embroidery threads are cotton, so you can use that as well. Um, and technically, you want to, when you're using embroidery thread, you want to use two threads the same way I have here. 
because embroidery thread splits. The only reason I suggest for like structural mending like this to use a, a harder um, thread is because you don't want it breaking when somebody stretches up. You don't want the armhole ripping or whatever. We have the seam. It's not that pretty, but it gets the job done. And again, remember this is the, the title of this is visible mending. If you want to right here, just for a little bit of extra structural integrity, flip it inside out and knot your thread. And you can do that on the seam of the fabric itself, which is something that I tend to do because the seam of the fabric is one of the strongest points. And I tend to do something very similar to a French knot, but I'll do it twice. I know professional seamstresses are probably gonna, you know, scream at their TV, uh, that their TV, they're screaming at their um, phone or their laptop or their computer screen right now, saying that's not how you do it. Well, I've been hand sewing for a while, and this is, sorry, I just dropped my scissors. Uh, this is how I've been doing it. So, so we're gonna go over this again. If you have little loops, like this one, if it's part of the thread that you just sewed in, try and pull it taut, because you want it taut. This is not cooperating. Oh, there we go. But if you really have a loop that you missed somewhere along the way, you can always bolster it down by going back over it. Now keep in mind, this is not a mending technique I would suggest for everything. If you don't mind it being seen, it's fine. But if you're trying to hide your seam, that's going to be another video entirely. So here's a perfect example of having a loop that's just sitting there, minding its own business. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our thread and sort of force it to sit on the seam flat. So what I've done is I just put my needle through it, going this way, hooking it, and then I'm going to sort of demand it stay put, and then I'm going to go sew over top of it. And then when you get a couple of inches left that you don't think you can get any further, do your knot. And you can do this either on the seam which is hiding in between the cracks here, or you can do it on the thread you just sewed. And, ooh, this is cutting tight. Pull it tight. Do it once more. If you can. This is really, okay, maybe not, yeah, maybe. You can do it this way too. And then grab your scissors and get that clipped. And that's the seam we have so far. Now I'm going to finish this up a little bit later and I'll show you close up, but this is essentially what you can do. You can fill this in a little bit more here. As you can see, I've got a couple of gaps. I might finish it more densely, so we'll see how that goes. Okay, so I had to hunt down for a scrap that would be big enough. And because this is a giant hole, it's massive. Because there's a whole bunch of not a lot of here anymore. Oh, I think I even just ripped a part of it right there. But that's okay, because we have some really cute Paddington Bear fabric. Look at me smiling. So we're gonna use that, and we're gonna cover up most of these holes. And we're gonna try and use as much space as possible to cover as many holes as we can within reason 
to patch up this giant gaping hole in the front of the chest where the TARDIS used to be. And we're going to also use a second piece because there's not as many holes down in this area and there is no shame in overlapping your fabrics, so that's fine. We're going to use the ladybugs after. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take Paddington here, set him up, stitch down around all the holes, and then I'm going to take, like, j just so that we can get where our foundation is going to be. I'm not going to do it super fancy. I'm not going to spend a lot of time tacking it down because we're going to go over the edges again. And we're also going to essentially um, do a stitch that's a little tighter, much, very much like the seam that we just did. Um, so then that way it stays put. And we're also going to sew all of this into this fabric. So then that way there's a lot less wear and tear that's gonna happen here. And this will bolster the fabric a lot more. And I'm also gonna do that with this uh, little bit of ladybugs and, and lady beetles. So we're gonna do that like so. And then essentially the whole point of this is, is to make this sturdy enough so that it can go through the washing machine. I'm hoping that my techniques will work. It should, because I've done this before. Um, in fact, I've done this with a bed sheet because I had a giant gaping hole in one and I even used it for when we went out camping to cover my mat our air mattress. Uh, let me get this set up. So we're going to clip what we don't need. So we're gonna go just a little bit over like where, where you can see the holes. And I've been adjusting this so that this hole gets covered and there's another hole that's just over here. And then there's another one here up the top before we get to the giant mess of holes. So essentially I'm trying to make sure that everything's covered before we do. Um, oh, there's a couple here. I don't know if I'll be able to get that with this piece. Will I be able to get all the pieces or get all the holes? Again, you can lay it sideways if you really want to. You can double up on the fabric. You can go over spots. You can leave this visible and you can just whip stitch it together. The same thing with these holes. The same thing with these, this hole. This hole, because it's so thin, I might actually need to reinforce that too. <clears throat> this is going to be one big patch job when I'm done. Anyhow, uh, let's see how far Paddington can get us. I might actually reverse tactic here and make that piece longer like that because the ladybug is longer let's break out the embroidery hoop and see how far we get now depending on the size of the embroidery hoop because what we're mending is bigger than the hoop that i have you can do it in sections um a lot of quilters will use this sort of technique um especially if you have like a lap size embroidery hoop it's not ideal but it will do the job that's the key thing you want it to you want it this this tutorial is mainly to be functional more than um fancy so let me see what i can cover yeah that looks actually pretty good Laying it on like that. All right, scissors, come here. I need you, scissors. You kind of want to start it on a straight edge here where there's no ends sticking out per se. Because, and, and this is the kind of case where you want it pulled taut. You want it really tight. Because it will sort of, the, 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 the quilt, the, the quilting fabric won't stretch per se, but the rest of the t-shirt will relax back into its semi-stretchy state. So this will bunch up a little bit during wear, but we also want to cover all the holes. So 
Let's get this stayed down. Nice and tight. Eh, that little wrinkle's not gonna be so bad. You know what? Wrinkles are okay in this kind of project. Because again, visible mending. It's gonna look a little strange. Because some people will be like, well, it's got a giant hole in it. Why did you just not go out and buy a new one? It's like, because maybe you love the t-shirt that you're wearing, that you want to keep. Um, maybe it's something that's a little more nostalgic to you that you want to keep repairing until it completely dies. Um, or maybe it's just a really comfortable item of clothing. Um, I've seen visible mending on shoes, on bags, on purses, on dresses, on sweaters. Th there's no limit in terms of what you can do to mend. Um, not only that, but like I said earlier, it also keeps it out of landfills. And um, it keeps things from being having to be thrown out. Because the whole reduce, reuse, recycle... Well, essentially, in this case, we're kind of reusing slash recycling. Because all of these fabrics that you see me using are from previous projects. And in fact, um, the, the skirt I'm wearing is also a collection of odds and ends of little scraps of fabric that I've bought from odds and ends that are leftovers from quilters. <clears throat> what I'm going to do, we're going to do what's called a running stitch. So I'm going to start on the bottom side of the fabric, roughly where the where I want to baste it down. And hopefully you'll see the, the, the thread, because I'm using the green again. And yes, I know, I like to live dangerously, because I'm not using a thimble. But this fabric is not particularly stiff, so it shouldn't cause me any problem. And we're just going to in and out, in and out, in and out, to tack this down. Just so it stays put. So this will take me a little while. Yes, you'll be sewing past the holes. You might be sewing, it, sewing into the holes. That's okay. I'm going to try and tack down the under fabric as best as I can. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it. There's the hole and there's my needle here. Whoop. No, stay put. Eh, no, my hoop doesn't want to stay put. Make sure you tighten your hoops, folks. And if you really need to, you can even use like a clip or something here. It's also important that when you're sewing, that you don't sew the rest of the shirt, that you only show, sew this layer, because I've made the same mistake before, and I'm sure other seamstresses or sewers have in the past as well, where you're sewing along, sewing along, and the next thing you know, you catch the arm when you don't really want to sew the arm down, so... Just be careful what you're attaching on the underside. Now when you get to the corner, if you really want to bolster it down, just to make sure it has a bit of strength, you can backstitch, which is you make your stitch, like so, and then you go back halfway and then do your stitch. Um, I already did one little dot in the back corner, so I'm just going to carry on, carrying on, until I run out of thread. Now, I want to take a moment to address this hole right here. If you want, and this is something that you can do, Backstitch a little bit when you get to this point. Make a knot, just so then that way you have the rest of your basting work situated. So I'm going to do one on the original thread here a little bit. 
just to keep it secure. That didn't work very well. All right, let's do that on the original thread that I just did, because that knot just failed miserably. And it's okay if this overlaps a little bit, because the more you go over this, the more this will be hidden. Or at least tacked down and secured. And when you're when you're filling it in like this, you want to kind of go a little bit past the hole on both sides. So I will probably do that. As you see, this hole is mostly closed, but I'm going to start back over here, which was this, along the, slip, the s stitching that I did here earlier, and I'm just going to whip across that too. <clears throat> Now, if you have a little bit of flyaways like those, you can just trim them off. Like so. There we have it. The hole is closed. As you can see. So that is less likely to come apart again. And this also helps to tack down th this fabric here. So I'm going to make a knot on the, the other side, just really quickly and then continue to baste this down using my running stitch. Now this part's also really thin, so if you really wanted to, you could probably do some fancy embroidery or some sort of just basic reinforcing stitching, like doing a weaving in and out and out, just to strengthen this section up, because you can almost see my finger through it. So even though you might not see this very well on camera, just so I can use it up, I'm going to use some of the pink thread. Because I did cut off a piece and then realized that was probably a bad decision. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this edge. I'll see you back here in a minute. Alrighty. So this is what we have so far. Yes, it's a little bit puffy in the middle, but don't worry, we'll tack that down. So now I'm going to go ahead and attach the yellow strip of ladybugs that I was going to say I was going to do in three, two, one. Okay, so uh, in between that wonderful magic jump cut, I noticed something. I got a bit of a problem, but that's okay because what we can do, make sure that this part overlaps enough, like make sure this yellow fabric overlaps enough of Paddington and we're going to rely back on our whip stitching. So this is a little trickier because you have to kind of hold it in place. What this will do is essentially reinforce all of your edges together so there's no holes. So you see, all the holes are starting to get very nicely covered up. And we're going to do this even more. Don't wait. Don't worry. Just you wait. We're going to have more hole coverage in a little bit. It's going to take me forever to edit. Got like 
almost an hour of footage so far. And that's just sewing. I'm gonna take a second here to go over a really small spot that's right there. It looks like it's probably gonna go, whether I want it to or not. And if you want to, you can extend past where you're sewing and do a bit of a loose whip stitch. Like so. Just to kind of reinforce that one spot. Because I think if I waited any longer, my finger would probably go through it. Um, and then when you come back around, when you're whip stitching all the way around the edge, like I did on my pants, you can extend it past with that spot of wear and tear, and you can go over any of these little spots that you see for where it's thinning and reinforce those spots. And of course, you're going to want to keep it the fabric taut, so then that way it lays flat, because essentially this is going to shrink or you know, get roughed up even more in the wash, but it will sort of shrink with the fabric, if that makes sense, or it'll it'll start forming to the fabric and becoming one with the base fabric. So that's essentially the goal. All right, so I've forged ahead a little bit, as you can see. We're gonna go on to how to essentially do the next part, which is filling in your stitches to secure holes or to secure the rest of the fabric so that it's a lot more stable. So as you can see, I've added some extra fabric. So this is another technique that you can use. If, say for example, you don't want all this colorful fabric on the front, you want to showcase where the holes are, but reinforce it from the back. So I took some, it's a little upside down, some cupcake fabric, just a scrap for whatever, you know, whatever size. You, I just wanted to pick something that I could use as an example. And I tacked it down, as you can see, all the way around the ed edges. And what I'm doing is I'm sewing over the holes. So then that way, even if these do stretch a little bit, it's still going to be reinforced along the way. And I'm also going to be tacking them down with something called shishiko stitching, which is a Japanese technique of sewing. I realize this is not super straight. It doesn't have to be. If you really want to get super intensive and make it super straight, you can, um, you know, mark it with a, a washable pencil of some sort just to get where your lines are. Um, some dressmakers will actually take a pen and make markings on their finger, so then that way they can space out their stitches. So it's like you make the stitches wide as the marking on your thumb. In fact, I know you're not supposed to do this with a regular ballpoint pen. Don't do this at home. Standard ballpoint pen. I'm going to, on the very tip of my thumb, Mark out how long I want my stitches to be. This is something that a lot of costumers will do. This is something a lot of uh, seamstresses will do. For those of you who know me for a while, I've been working on a quilt that has pieces this size for like six years. No, it's been longer than that. It's been like eight years. Anyhow. Aha! There we go. Now it's working. So, I digress. I'm gonna mark them on the edge of my thumb. Some people will use their finger. I'm gonna use my thumb because of the way I hold stuff. I'm gonna mark it like so. And then as I sew, you'll see in a minute when I put the pen down, that I'm lining up the stitch with the pen mark, and I'm going to stitch to the length of the pen mark. And then I'm gonna move my thumb and stitch to the length of the pen mark. So that way your spacing is going to be relatively even.
and more of a metered spaced out. Anyhow, I'm going to finish up two here, then I'm going to grab another color of embroidery thread and show you the next step. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of straight running stitches that I did to reinforce, and there's the back, just so you can see. Now, we're going to be essentially doing the same thing on these pieces for this stitch, eventually. I might not do it today, I might do it later, whenever I need this as an example. Um, keep in mind, this is just a tutorial. I may or may not do the whole shirt. I don't know. We'll see. I do want to finish my pants at some point. So to do this next step, we're going to make little crosses. So because we've got rows of stitches already done, we can pretty much do a running stitch straight across the row. Like so. And this helps to tack down the base fabric. It looks pretty because it's just a whole bunch of textured, essentially embroidery. Very basic embroidery, but it's embroidery nonetheless. And it also secures the reinforcing fabric that you're using, which is the cupcake one underneath. So I hope you got a chance to see that properly, and I do apologize. This, like I said, this is not the best setup, and I'm trying to do this around the camera. Now, if you want to, you can still do a running stitch where there isn't any stitches. That's fine. The whole point of this is to try and reinforce the fabric that's there. Ow. Yeah, don't stab yourself like I just did. And if you need to, if there's not quite enough room, you can always backstitch. If you want a solid line of thread, you can do a running backstitch. You can do, um, once you have everything tacked down, you can always embroider on top of it as well. Um, to do, like, leaf petals or a running, um, chain stitch or anything that you find texture-wise that would be interesting that just reinforces your fabric. I'm not expecting you to go super fancy because this is just the basics, but I hope this helps you. Now we're coming on the hole. So what we're going to do is we're going to stitch over top of the hole and into the reinforcing fabric so that way it tacks the hole down. Now you can, if you want to, do something like a buttonhole stitch. Um, Bernadette on her channel shows a really fantastic tutorial on how to do this um, in ye old 18th century uh, old school style. Um, you can do the whip stitch like I've done in a couple places like here to reinforce the hole. You can do pretty much whatever you want. Like, there's no... With, with visible mending, there's no hard set rules. As long as you are sewing, you tack down any of the holes that are present, or it covers up or reinforces the hole so that it's not going to tear further. And, well, it's visible mending, so you should be able to see it. You don't... You can do invisible mending, but that's not... Now, you're thinking to yourself, probably, Oh, hey, I can do this. It looks fairly easily. It's 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 not going to take a whole crap ton of time. Uh, hate to break it to you, but uh, as certain personalities on TV, such as Adam Savage, when he was working for Mythbusters, he often said, ye olde techniques take ye olde sweet time. Uh, nothing could be truer said than about hand sewing. Hand sewing is very labor intensive. It takes a long time to do. Some people just do it for the enjoyment of the process, which is absolutely fine. Um, some people use it just the same way as, say for example, the way I would do knitting. I just plop myself down, watch the latest TV show on the internet. Um, I have a whole bunch of fandoms that I like watching, like say for example, The Mandalorian is a good show. I really enjoy it. 
And then there's the Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe that I can rewatch until whenever they decide to release Black Widow. You see how you have a whole bunch of vertical stripes going this way? You can weave it, much like my weaving loom. I don't know if I'll be able to... Over there. So you're gonna essentially weave some extra reinforcing fabric over top. Uh, this is how some of the visible mending weaving looms work. I don't have one. I get the general premise of how they work. I have yet to try one. When you're when you're weaving, it's whatever last one you went under, you go over on the next row, and whichever one you went over on, you go under. So. Now this is really hard to see because the lighting is not the best in here, but I'm trying my best. It's not going to be perfect, but then again it doesn't have to be. Okay, so as you can see, it now looks a lot more woven, it's a lot more sturdy. You can't even see the original hole anymore. That's kind of the purpose of visible mending. Um, I have seen some gorgeous weaves very similar to this done in sweaters um, or the bottoms of socks, um, which essentially is what the mushroom that I showed you earlier was for. But essentially, just play with it. Um, there is one last technique that I'm going to show you with holes. Is that, and I'm going to start with this big, sorry, I'm going to start with this big one here is that to bolster the fabric, you can go around it. So very much like how you would whip stitch a hole that's small, you can sort of do the same, except you don't necessarily have to whip stitch it. Instead, um, I'm just gonna kind of run up to it here, and then just sort of do, I'm gonna do a back stitch for this one. I'm gonna go all the way around to bolster that fabric. And this will also help tack it down if you want to do stitching over top or if you want to weave it. So then that way it doesn't go anywhere. And it'll give it a really good reinforcement. And I would suggest doing the, this and then possibly the weaving for anything that has um, a lot of need of structural integrity, like say a shoulder seam or an inseam or crotch seam or um, spots with a lot of wear and tear or anywhere that's going to be, there's going to be a lot of friction or rubbing because you don't want this splitting any further uh, or widening any further than it already has. Might have enough to go all the way around. This, folks, is what we call yarn or thread chicken, where you're playing chicken with the end of the thread. Do I have enough? Yes, I think I do. Okay, so I've taken this off of the embroidery hoop for now, just so you can see. As, as you can tell, there's probably a long way to go, because there's still a million holes in this shirt. But I wanted the opportunity to show you um, some techniques with doing some work. Yes, this is going to be bunchy. It will, as you tack it down and as it's stretched over the embroidery hoop, this will form into shape. So it's not quite as loose and bulky and bunchy because there's, let, let's face it, on the back of this, there's really not a lot there. As you can see, this is like riddled with holes, but as it stands right now, technically you could wear it, but I would want to do a lot more reinforcement. I would want to tack this down so then that way the holes can't have a chance to rip tear or um, spread even bigger. Um, this one I would probably finish off um, and then I would go into reinforcing all these other ones. Yes, this shirt is practically Swiss cheese, but you know, uh, I'm mainly using this as a demo model because this was I, I needed something that had a lot of holes in it that I could show how to fix okay so just to show you your progress so far 
Like I said, there's a lot of other holes to do, but the biggest one has been essentially covered at least for now. Um, like I said, it'll take a while before I get to fill all this in, but eventually, like I mentioned before, your end result. Now granted, this is a much smaller hole that was in it, but this is kind of what you want to see. Shuffle that. I'm not sure if that's a stain or water. You can also use this to cover stains. If you don't like an unseemly stain, I'm pretty sure this is either water or I don't know, something that was on my hands. You can use this technique to cover over stains if you really don't want a specific stain to be seen and you would much rather cover it up with your pretty handiwork. As you can tell, I have a Halloween theme. I like Halloween. But essentially this is the kind of technique that you want to use and the sort of end result that you want to see. Because as you can see, this is very, very easily wearable right about now. It's really solid. All the edging has been done, so then that way nothing comes undone. Um, you won't get any flyaway threads from the fabric. Um, I didn't use that much. This is only about, what, four or five inches maybe? Well, probably closer to six. And then you've got the peeking hole here, but it's been very well tacked down all the way around. This is my current work in progress for this side because, like I said, it's identical on both sides of the fabric, but this is at least the in-between portion so that you can see the kind of work that I've been doing. Use the same techniques to do a lot of repairing work, um, whether it's to fix a seam, to fix a hole, or even just to cover up something that you don't want there. Um, you can use that in multiple ways of patchwork, and as a point of reference, you can even use embroidery techniques, as you can see in my patch quill here. Um, it, it's essentially what you're doing, is you're doing sort of patchwork on a shirt rather than on a quilt. So, as you can see, even just a basic running stitch can look really pretty. Um, I used a metallic thread for this. Sometimes metallic threads are the devil. Yes, you will hear that a lot from seamstresses and especially um, embroiderers. But the end result is absolutely pretty. So I had a bit of fun with this one. But it's exactly the same technique that I used to quilt this portion of the quilt down as I did on the shirt as you previously saw. So any, any skills that I'm teaching you, yes, they're not perfect. Yes, I'm not a professional, but it doesn't mean that once you learn a technique that you can't use it in a hundred different other ways. I have been Kiruna, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I haven't been on the internet for very, very long time. So I hope you found this video educational. If you happen to like it, please hit the subscribe button. I don't know when I'm going to be posting again. Uh, keep in mind that none of my videos are going to be monetized. It's not fair to you out there because you're all already inundated with more ads and in the near future, YouTube is going to be adding ads to every single video, no matter what, anyway. So if you happen to enjoy my work, please send me a like, send me a subscription, or subscribe to my channel if you want to. There's no pressure. I'm not expecting anybody to do. Um, for the two or three of you that have decided to stick to the end of this video, I hope you found it entertaining and informative. Um, and please vote on the community page on my website, or not on my website, on my YouTube channel, um, to decide what project you want to see next. So I've been Kira Una, thank you for watching, and I will see you out there, out there on the internet. <laughs>